Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. Michael, Merry Christmas. Hey, this is a video that your son Davin put together because he has your horological interests at heart. All right, so this video is for you. All right, before we get started, guys, the Horological Haiku Contest. All right, the deadline is coming up the 24th Christmas Eve midnight. Be sure to submit your haikus for a chance to win some horological stuff and link in the description to the video I made about that. So if you've got a haiku ready to go, check that out. And uh, I have mine and I'm gonna submit it tonight. All right, so Michael, um, let's uh, talk about your developing interest in getting a Rolex watch. Well, first of all, congratulations on deciding to get a Rolex. I mean, these are not only utilitarian and functional, but they're also pieces of art and technical marvels. And uh, look, time is our most precious resource and to measure it on something crappy sucks. So to have a beautiful wristwatch is a true pleasure. My only regret is that I wish I had gotten into Rolex earlier. Uh, I got in in my late 30s and I wish I had gotten in in my early 30s. Notice I don't say 20s because I'm pretty damn sure I would have lost my watches on numerous occasions. I wasn't mature enough and um, I think 30s was when I sort of got my act together enough to get a Rolex. So perhaps being a late bloomer is not a big deal, right? All right, so Davin writes, I'm writing to request a video for my father, Michael, while myself and the rest of the world has been focusing on Rolex steel sports. He's thinking about getting something more conservative, a more gentlemanly model for daily wear. He likes the idea of a two-tone model, possibly on a Jubilee with the date as a requirement. He doesn't want something huge or ostentatious, so I'm thinking 36 millimeter date just, but 34 might work as well. He currently wears a Hamilton khaki field mechanical watch. I bought him. All right, Michael. So now let's just say that I think um, 36, where, where do we start? Where do we start? Well, you like the conservative look and I probably would start by suggesting something like an Oyster Perpetual because they're balanced classic time-only watches, but you want something with a date. And when it comes to a one watch, I think I would suggest getting something with a date. So that's good because, look, you're kind of lost without the date at times. And it and even though it takes three seconds, it sucks to pull out your phone and have to check the date. You kind of feel like your watch failed you. And yes, no date watches can have a beautiful balanced look, but that small consolation when you have to rely on a damn phone for the date. So um, after a while, it's not a big deal. And you know, the, the balance dials are nice, but it's also nice to have the Cyclops, which is a very Rolex element we'll talk about. Uh, so yes, date, good idea. Now, as for size, 36, 34 millimeter. Well, 34 can be a bit on the small side and a lot of people look at that as a lady's watch, even though I think it might look great on you. I know 34 millimeter looks good on me, but the 36 millimeter size is perfect. It is the perfect standard size for a date just. And, you know, without the rotating bezel, I think 36 millimeters is perfect. So I really think you should consider getting a 36 millimeter watch. And I think your son nails it. I think a 36 millimeter date just would be the way to go. And uh, let's talk about the date just. Well, the date just came out in 1945 and it was an anniversary piece. It marked the 40th anniversary of Rolex and it was released on the Jubilee bracelet, which I'm wearing right here. And the Jubilee bracelet, well, Jubilee means the anniversary of a special event. And in this case, it was the 40th anniversary of Rolex. And in fact, the date just was supposed to be called the Jubilee, all right, right? And, and I'm kind of glad they didn't name it that. Uh, they ended up calling the bracelet the Jubilee. 
and um, and the watch was called a date just, and it was called a date just because the date is always just in the date window with that quick change date. So you know, around twelve o'clock, it clicks over, and it doesn't take hours to cycle through. You know, even modern mechanical watches on the lower end still take ages to cycle through and so it's amazing that Rolex was doing it back in 1945 and that's that's a real pleasure uh, to witness your date changeover and that's why it's called the date just because it's always just in that window it's never offset and um, came out in 1945 and it was released in solid gold Rolex does that a lot with anniversary models precious metal models. Well, five years later, it came out in steel and two-tone, which you're thinking about getting. And um, a two-tone watch is a beautiful watch for an older guy. I think two-tone works really well with gray hair. And, you know, I wouldn't recommend two-tone for a younger guy, but a guy with with some maturity about him, I think two-tone looks really nice and you've got the strength of steel but you've got that element and warmth of gold and you know i think a two-tone would be great for my dad my dad wears a 600 dollars raymond wheel raymond wheel and um last time i saw it i was trying it on and and it's a quote two-tone watch and 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 the two-tone bit was actually rubbing off Ooh, all right um i think a two-tone would be perfect for him as well Anyway, so uh, the date just. Now, let's talk about the Cyclops. Now, the Cyclops didn't originally appear on the, the date just. It took a while to, to, to get there. In fact, from 1950 to 1953, accounts vary as to when it actually appeared. According to Rolex, it was 1953. Um, the date got the Cyclops. And the Cyclops, of course, is this little bubble there to help you see the date. And... Um, you know, it's very useful when you're getting up there in years because it does magnify the date kind of nicely. And the story goes that it was Hans Wilsdorf's wife that had trouble seeing the date and hence the Cyclops was born. I don't know if that's a bit of apocrypha. It's a nice story nonetheless. But um, he certainly was uh, keen on the Cyclops bringing another visual element that he thought would would excite people and he was sort of protective over it as well he released a statement to watchmakers saying please notice the cyclops and don't get any ideas about uh copying it or we'll get litigious thank you very much you learn to love it and it is very fun to look through it it gives it it gives checking the date a, a weird it's it's fun. I it's I, that's the best way I could describe it. You know, when I when I just have a regular watch with a date, it just it there it is. It's a date window. But but looking through the Cyclops, it's uh, it's fun and it's a very Rolex element. And you can you can spot a Rolex across the room with that with that characteristic Cyclops. So if you're gonna have one Rolex, I would want one with a Cyclops. So the Jubilee is a great bracelet. It's very, uh, very comfortable, super comfortable. And, you know, I mean, it's, if you're going the date just route, and I think that's what I would choose for you, you know, because the Jubilee was born on the date just, I mean, I think while you can get the date just on a oyster bracelet, which is a more masculine looking bracelet and it's, uh, it's a little tougher. I think I think it's it's uh, it's perfect for a date just the um, the Jubilee bracelet. So that's my favorite configura configuration. And as far as the the bezel goes, I think fluted is the way to go. Now apparently fluted and and I'm sure you've seen fluted bezels, but apparently the way uh, that came about is these old watches would have sort of a um, almost like a coinage thing almost like the the case back and what that was is to to unscrew the crystal and uh, and so that's what that was it was actually uh, sort of uh, 
to put the unscrewing tool on the the front of the crystal and unscrew it and that morphed into the fluted look which is totally uh just ornamental uh now but again just like the jubilee bracelet is such a characteristic of the of the date just and it's what i would recommend all right so i'm glad that you have a hamilton khaki field mechanical watch because it means that you're aware of mechanical watches and sort of the idiosyncrasies um, that they're famous for, you know, plus or minus a little time each day. And um, if not, if you were coming off of a, a quartz watch, then I might say that you might want to look at an Oyster Quartz, which is a discontinued quartz watch that Rolex had for a while. Um, you know, the steel versions were something I kind of liked and was thinking about for a while. Uh, that's a reference 1700 for a two tone that would be 17013 and uh, they are interesting i, I kind of love them because they're rolexes uh, but if i really step back the shape is sort of dated and retro and sort of a product of when they came out which was like uh, the 1970s kind of interesting that was the first model to have the sapphire crystal all right um so i don't think i would recommend that i i just because of the dated look but um you know some people love them anyway um speaking of the sapphire crystal now you could get a five digit and i think that's probably what i would go with if i were you and and you could get a one six zero one three all right and that would be you know, a, a, a sort of a vintage model, discontinued model. And that's a two-tone date just, 36 millimeter. And um, it doesn't have the sapphire crystal. It has the um, acrylic crystal, okay? I, you know, you could probably get a decent deal on that, but with your range of three to 6,000 USD, you could get the next iteration, which was the 16233. And that had the sapphire crystal, uh, has the, I want to say the 3135 movement, which is sort of a, a, an updated movement. And that's what I would go for. And I think they're running around, you know, five to six. And uh, that's, I think, what I would go for if I were you. And get on, get on uh, Google Type it in, look at Google Images, type in Rolex 16233, go to Google Images and just run through and, and see what you like. Now, you can find them with diamond dials. I think that looks kind of effeminate. I'm not a fan of diamond dials. And you can find different dial colors as well. I think the classic look is champagne. And that's beautiful. And it works well because when you have, say, a black dial, then you got the three colors there. And I think it looks a little bit tacky, but you know, the gold of the champagne dial works great with the two-tone. It's got that warm look to it. Classic look. So, um, final, final recommendation, Michael, for you would be a Rolex 16233 36 millimeter date, just two-tone with a champagne dial. And that's in your price range. And that would be a great one watch to have and there you go all right michael again merry christmas hope it's a great one for you and good luck with getting your watch and enjoy it thanks for watching take care see you next time